verse 36 through to verse 50. Amen. And we're going to ask the Lord to bless you. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Give the house a little boost, just a teeny bit. All right, can you hear me now? Yes. Amen. We thank God for that. <clears throat> We're going to begin reading there. Father, I'm asking for a special, special anointing. I recognize that without you, I could do nothing. I am nothing. You're the potter. I am the clay. I'm on your wheel for your purpose. I ask, Lord, that you bless your people a special way minister to them more grace in Jesus name we pray it now amen right now everybody stand to your feet I'm asking that the, the, the uh, CD department give all our guests free CDs today and um, if you buy a CD it's going towards that ministry amen all right in Luke chapter 8 verse 1 and it came to pass afterwards that he went throughout every city and village preaching and showing the, the he said the glad tidings of the kingdom of God and the twelve were with him and a certain woman which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities Mary called Magdalene out of whom went seven devils somebody said the devil is alive and now in Luke chapter 7 and verse 36 through to verse 50 and one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him and he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet and behold a woman in the city which was a sinner when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house brought an alabaster box of oil and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did, and did wipe them with the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the anointment. Now when the Pharisees which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he said, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors, the one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will, will love him most? And Simon answered and said, I suppose that he that whom he forgave much, he, and he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged me. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears, and wiped them with the hairs of her head. 
Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, have not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loveth much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they said that said at meat with him, began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said unto the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. Let the church say amen. You may be seated. Now I'm ministering flawed people. But here is a flawed servant. And one of the reasons why I'm dealing with flawed people and flawed servants is because of Romans chapter 3 verse 23. And if anybody know what that says, in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23 in your Bibles. Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. It says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. Religious people have a tendency to look down and snarl at people that have made mistakes and failed in their life. And the mystery of most religious people, they don't want you to touch them because they're too holy. They're the most wickedest things that God would ever look at. The Bible said, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no wise inherit the kingdom of God. The scribes and the Pharisees were religious people. And basically, they didn't get along with each other simply because they was enough different denominational groups. You had scribes, you had Pharisees, and you had sad UCs. And the sad UCs were people that literally were religious. I'm too holy. I've been just came out of sanctification. Don't touch me. Don't even look at me. I'm glowing. Jesus. With your nasty self. If you're going to glow, you should glow for the glory of God. The question went out about Jesus. Why sit ye your master with publicans, scribes, and sinners? Jesus turned around and told him, because they have need of me. He said, you don't need me. If anybody was going to come to Jesus, even little children, he said, suffer little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. I have a mainline minister, and I won't mention his name. You heard about it. Children can't even be christened in this church because the mother ain't married. Well, look at Mary Magdalene. Well, all right. Look at the mother of Jesus. She was pregnant before she was married. Joseph was trying to put her away privately. There's a lot of flawed people in the Bible that lets us know we ain't about nothing. And there's no reason for no baby to come up in here with, with not no daddy not to be christened. Amen. Every child is worthy. Yes. Amen. Amen. The only way they know sin was through their own parents. Hallelujah. And they was actually breeded into that child. Amen. We are the ones that actually make up the kingdom of God, his jewels and his crowns. Amen. So for all have sinned and what? Come short of the glory of God. Now I'm not giving you a license to sin. That's right. I don't want you to pat yourself on the back because if you get caught up in sin, you can die and go to hell and can't nobody get you out. The bout that we face with right now is being in right standing with God. So when the devil come in like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard against him. Now that standard is God's word that's being bred into your spirit because faith cometh by yeah. and hearing by. Word of God. Now God's word is coming into you, 
straightway come the devil. In John 10.10, 10, the thief coming not but forth to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I come that they might have what? Life. And that they might have it more abundantly. How can God cause you to live when your spirit is dying? Get the woo-woo out. Now, a lot of times people don't quite understand. If the enemy's job is to take from you what God has given you, you got to hold fast to sound doctrine. What's right about God and what's wrong about you. If we came into the presence of God with filth on us, he could see clean through us. It's no way you could get around the fact, because some of you still want to go out and party. Some of you still slipping out to the casino, playing with the one-armed bandit. <laughs> That's your arm so sore right now, if I touch it, you say I hit you. <laughs> Somebody see you say, shut up, you don't tell, no tell. What's done in Las Vegas stays in Las Vegas. <laughs> but we're here in the spirit of God. And the enemy is sitting around saying, oh my God, what you doing up in here? You supposed to have been out last night, knocked out from being up all night in that room that had no windows, no clocks in it. Okay. The enemy's job is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I come that you might have. Now, we're creatures of habit. David said, I made the Lord my habitation. Now, I'm in the realm of the spirit now because you think these words I'm giving are mine. No, they're his. If you ask me what I was going to say next, I can't tell you. But God's going to read your mail. When the Holy Spirit begins to read your mail, he gets into your heart. He does open heart surgery. And what he's going to deal with is his perfect will in your life. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come unto him and sup with him and he with me. I am waiting on you to open the door. Everybody else's doors is open. Why you keep closing yours when he knocks? God says, open the door. I want to come in. I got something for you. Mary. This woman had seven demonic forces delivered out of her being. She was so grateful until she was mentioned in the Bible 12 times. Now, when you've seen her come in the presence of Jesus, she brought the best that she had. She brought the alabaster box of great price. This was cologne and perfume and frankincense that would cost more than what anybody could have. This is what's her savings. And she brought it all and put it at the feet of Jesus and began to wash his feet. But the Pharisee said, if he only knew what type of woman this is, don't that sound like somebody you know being judgmental all the time? Come on now, Jesus. He wouldn't let her touch him. Jesus didn't mind her touching him. He had already cast seven spirits out of her. She was coming back to say, thank you. I'm free from the mess I was in. I'm free from the mistakes I made. I'm free and I thank God I'm free. And to show her appreciation, she came right up on Jesus. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and dry his feet with her hair. Baby, if you got to dry his feet with your weave, do it. <laughs> Y'all pray for me, I'll repent. <laughs> it's your hair, I'll repent. <laughs> was and she was in tears 
Now, something about being in tears, the Bible says a broken spirit and a contrite heart, God will not despise, neither will he turn away. Amen. Now, if your spirit is broken, God will catch that broken spirit and fix it. Nobody can fix a broken spirit like God can. Amen. Have you ever caught yourself crying and couldn't stop? Amen. And you kept crying. You said, God, I'm going <laughs> now I get ugly when I cry. Wow. You catch me not be hanging down. <laughs> and I get real ugly. I love when God beat me with his belt. Because he chasing them that he loved. Now if you ain't got a whoop and get one from God. When he get to whooping you, you straighten up and you fly right. Then my eyes dry up and you're like, what, 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 what? That's right. Who got swallowed by a whale? Jonah. When Jonah said he would go and preach for God, go to Nineveh, he got on the boat and went to Joppa. He went the opposite direction. You know what I'm talking about here? <laughs> God took him to hell. Because when he got swallowed by the whale, the whale went down to hell. Amen. How do I know that? When he came out that belly, the belly of the whale, he had a three-day journey in front of him. He made it in one day. <laughs> Something scared the hell out of him. <laughs> so, when he scared him, he made the journey in one day. Ordinarily, you know how people laser. I get there when I get there. Mess around and go to hell. I guarantee you, you'll make it in one. Yeah. Now, when that happened, this was truly, utterly amazing. A blessing from the Lord took place right here. How the Lord can take one day, rearrange, and change everything in that day in your life. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes. What a difference one day will make. Amen. God can break everything off of you and every chain that's holding you in one day. one day. And in that same day, you'll make a journey that you never thought you would ever make because of the Holy Spirit and because of God. He takes flawed people. Yes, he does. People that's messed up and he uses them. Don't ever think God can't use you. God can't use you because the Spirit comes in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 1. What does it say? Romans chapter 8 verse 1. What does it say? Romans chapter 8 verse 1. What do it say? Romans chapter 8 verse 1. What do it say? What? What does it say? No, there's no what? There's no what? Condemnation to them which what? Or in Christ who walk not after the what? They don't walk after the flesh, they walk after the what? Uh-huh. When God begins to deal with you, he takes you out of your flesh. That's it. That's, 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 that's it. A lot of people come to me, my ministry, what I'm going to do, I got to hear me. It's about me. Devil ain't nothing about you. It ain't even about me. This ain't no one man show. Amen. Amen. Trying to worship me, the devil is alive. I don't have nothing to glory in. That's right. That's right. Yes. That's right. That's right. When God caught me, He caught me as a brand from the burning. My children came out of wet lot. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God had to correct me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So when people want to worship people, say, look, you better check yourself from the neck up. Jesus, come on. Lord, help There's something wrong here. Hallelujah. That's right. God takes flawed people. He don't take people that got it all together. Got their bachelor's and doctor's degrees. They just smart dumb. Smart dumb. That's right. Don't write that down. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying, buddy? <laughs> God uses ordinary people. When 
Jesus went and got his disciples, and after Christ had risen, they said, seeing these were ignorant and unlearned men, knowing that they had been with Jesus. God would go get the people that was of the lesser portions and raise them up to the greater portion. When God's spirit come on you, God's going to rearrange and change your thinking. Because sometimes in your mind you have difficulties when you look at others. Hallelujah. Come on. Everyone that saw Mary knew she was a sinner. Some even said she must have been a prostitute. Then others turned around and tried to surmise, oh, that was Jesus' girlfriend. They ain't even written in the word. The scholars came up with that mess. Mm -hmm. and tried to add something to the word and you don't add nothing to the word of God. God said the praise of this book I add to you. She was nothing but a grateful servant. She was so grateful she followed him everywhere. I've never seen a woman follow like she followed. And she was so grateful. Somebody say grateful. Let's go to Luke chapter 10. In Luke chapter 10, verse 38 in your Bible, in Luke 10 and 38, when you get there, I want you to say amen. Amen. 10, 38, through the 42, read. Now it came to pass, as they went, that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house and she had a sister called Mary the same one we which also sat at Jesus feet and heard his word but Martha was cumbered about much serving now she was troubled about much serving she got trouble because guess where Mary was at? She was back down at his feet again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Every time you found this woman, she was at the feet of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Now in those days, think about it. They didn't walk around with high heel shoes and boots. When they walked around, they walked around in the dirt with sandals on. Yes, that's yeah, right. Man. That's right. And every time Jesus came in the house, wasn't like the Chinese take your shoes off. She was always washing his feet. She was back at his feet. But Martha, her sister, got upset. You know how folk get upset when you're doing something they know they're supposed to be doing. Come on now. People get mad with you when you start serving. Am I right, Michelle? When you're serving God the way you're serving. They mad with you. You ain't got no business serving God like that. <laughs> Tell them they mad with you, you on the radio. You ain't got no, but you probably been shot down, but no, you still up on the radio. Amen. Stay mad with me. But she was cumbered about many things. Much what? Read. And came to him and, and said, and came to him and said Lord, Lord, do, not thou care do you not care that my sister, that my sister she done left me, I'm up here doing all this work and she done left me. <laughs> she probably be in there cooking with me fried chicken. <laughs> and cornbread. You got the cornbread, sweet water, with sweet water cornbread. Hot water. Oh, hot water. <laughs> Give me some hot water or something, Charlie. I don't know. Give us some sh- something. Give us some sugar or something. I don't know. Jiffy, Jiffy pop. I don't know. All right. Read. Go tell her, Jesus. Now, people try to do that to me all the time. Will you go in there and tell them folk how crazy they is and they don't come to service like they should? I ain't telling them nothing. You go tell them. Go tell her, Jesus. Now, people try to do that to me all the time. Will you go in there and tell them folk how crazy they is and they don't come to service like they should? I ain't telling them nothing. You go tell them. Because that ain't my job. No man can come to Christ unless the Spirit of God draws. It only can happen when God draw them. Read. And Jesus answered and said to her, Uh Uh-huh. 
Martha. 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 You get through talking, I'll be scared. <laughs> you might put something in me I don't want in me. Because people can drop stuff in your spirit. That's right. Amen. Spirit Thou art cumbered about many things. Trouble? No, your trouble ain't coming on me. Because trouble don't last. Always. 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 Read. But one thing is needful. But one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that good part. And Mary has chosen the good part. Which shall not, not be taken away from her. Come on and clap your hands, somebody. Hallelujah. You know, if you give a prophet a cold glass of water in the name of Jesus, you won't lose your reward. If I come in your house, you go with a, you go with a cold glass of water and hand it to me, God's going to bless you, and I'm going to say in the name of Jesus. Because you're giving a prophet a cold glass of water. You understand? We, now let's, now I think we took that one, no, we finished that. We're going out to Psalms. Now y'all ready? I'm ready to get happy. I'm ready to get real happy. Oh, Lord. Psalms 51. The preacher might come out now. Psalms 51 and verse 1 through the verse 14. I'm getting happy, I feel it. It's the spirit of the Lord in this place. Look what David said when he messed up royally. And look how David pleaded his case before the Lord. And a lot of times when you come before God, God, I just want you to forgive me. No, you better be careful. He can strike you dead. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But a fool will despise instruction and they will hate knowledge. But look what it says. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sins is ever before me. In other words, God, my conscience keeps bothering me about the things I messed up and I've done. I knew I wasn't supposed to do that, but God, have mercy on me. Are y'all still here now? Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mayest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shaping in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me. And I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from me or from my sin and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew in me a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit away from me. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation. And upon he said, What? Uphold, Uphold me with a what? Free spirit. Read verse 13. Then will I teach transgressors thy word. Uh -huh. And sinners shall be converted. They shall be what? They shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God. Thou God is my salvation, uh -huh. and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy life. Somebody say amen. amen. David cried out the right way. Yeah. Now, there's some things that you haven't been crying out about, but you keep having come, come and see on your mind. They trouble you. Your conscience is messing you up because what you've been going through is some things that happened way off in your past. But when God comes into your life, he says all things... I passed away, and behold, all things 
I become new. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. I don't have the past chasing me no more. Destiny stays in my way. Because what God has for me, it is for me. Oh, I'm trying to help somebody. Somebody's too busy looking in your past. Well, let me tell you like this, the past is the past. That ain't going to last no more. Because what God is getting ready to take you, eyes have not seen have not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Oh, taste and see somebody. Know that God is good. I'm going to preach to myself, so give me a little volume down here. I'm going to make myself happy. I found out when I stopped getting in the place where God wanted me to be. I woke up about 5 o'clock this morning. I started going around my room saying, thank you. God, whatever you got, I feel it. And I'm going to receive it. No devil, no demon in hell. Don't stop me from getting what you told me I could have. So I say he talking to you. But your breakthrough is right here and now. When the Bible says, now say this, the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen, God says, I got something for you, and your name is on it. It's a name to fame to claim. What God got for you, the devil can't take it no more. Because you done paid the price. You dedicated, consecrated your life. And now God's going to get the glory. Somebody say glory. Somebody say glory. Glory to God. I've got something down on the inside. Working on the outside. It's moving all over me. I'm free now. The devils can't get in my way. I'm giving God the praise and all the honor and the glory. Simply because he is, he is, he is. Somebody shout glory. Preacher, what's wrong with you? I'm crazy like a train. Hallelujah. When that freight train of the Holy Spirit get in you, get in, get out, or get ran over. I tried to run, he jumped on me here. Let God jump on you. You'll fall out on the floor in the presence. Amen. In the anointing. Being happy. Somebody say, I'm happy. What God has brought you out of, you just escaped in the nick of time. Look what God is bringing you to. Oh, taste and see. I'm talking to somebody in here. You free or not, and you've ever been in your whole entire life. The devil been trying to drag you backwards. But God said, I'm taking you forward. The more I drive you forward, the enemies are going to get upset. You used to drive a car that was called a hoopty. The bad boy had made pop ties, could have popped at any time. But you ain't driving no hoopty no more. God says, I'm going to put you in a fine driving vehicle. And now when your enemies see it, they say, what in the world is going on here? And you say, how you doing? They say, well, how you doing? And you say, I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm favored by God. Somebody shout glory to me. I like to meet people with favor on them. I say, I like to meet people with favor on them. I love to see people that's getting their breakthrough. I love to see people that's getting delivered. I love to see people that's getting healed. I love to see people that's getting up from the bottom and going to the top. Somebody shout glory to God. Somebody say, that's me, that's me, that's me. Shout glory, somebody. Mm. I feel this. 
All right, come on to Psalms, y'all. Come on to Psalms. Psalms 138, verse 7. Oh, my God, then go to Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6. Are y'all ready for this? Hallelujah. He says what he says in Psalms 138, verse 7 through the verse 8. Read, if you will. Then I walk in the midst of trouble. Uh-huh. Thou will revive me. Oh, my God, stop right there. How many of y'all been in trouble? Though I walk in the midst of trouble, he said, Thou will, thou will, thou will, thou will revive me. Read. Thou shalt stretch forth thy hand. Thou shalt stretch forth thy hand. Against the wrath of my, the wrath of my enemies. enemies. And thy right hand shall save me. The Lord will prevent. Whoa! Prevent. Uh -huh. That which is so. Perfect everything that concerns me. Read. Thy mercy, O Lord. Thy mercy, O Lord, endure forever. But say it not the works of thy own hands. Oh my God. Don't forsake you, God. Just move, move, move by your spirit. In the book of Philippians, Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. You get it? You got it? Say amen. Read. Be confident of this very thing. Now wait a minute. Be confident of this what? Very thing. Of this very thing. Now wait a minute. I ain't got no confidence in man. But I sure got confidence in God. Be confident in this very thing. Read. That he which have begun. That he which have begun. He which have begun. Jesus, he which have begun a good work in me. Somebody say in me, not in your boyfriend, not in your girlfriend, but in me. Read. He gonna perform it. Oh my God, he coming, he coming, he coming, he coming, he coming, he coming. Amen. Y'all see that? Be what? Confident. Of this what? Very thing. 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 Of this very, very thing. Now go to Mark. I'm coming home. I'm just excited. Y'all ain't excited enough for me, but that's all right. I get all by myself in this one. I'm going to get this one. In Mark chapter 12, verse 29 to the verse 30, read. And Jesus answered him. The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, uh -huh. the Lord our God is one Lord. Uh -huh. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God uh -huh. with all thy heart, yes. and with all thy soul, yes. and with all thy mind, uh -huh. and with all thy strength. Uh -huh. This is the first commandment. Somebody shout glory. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Stand on your feet. I'm through. 